Okay, morning everybody. It is Tuesday, uh, December the 4th. I am currently outside of Costco waiting to pick up some stuff. Uh, I brought my dog slave with me again. Say hi to Maximus. He's still toiling, toiling away as a dog slave, uh, but so far he seems to be happy. I don't know. Anyway, Anyway, so I'm going to, one thing I find about Costco is it's literally impossible for me to walk into Costco and not come out with a pack of ribeyes. <laughs> I don't know. There's some law about that. Maybe it's a carnivore, carnivore law, rule number one, impossible to leave Costco without ribeyes. All right, let's talk about a couple things. Let's talk about uh, the Asian cohort. So we see uh, studies out there saying that red meat is associated with colorectal cancer. It's largely epidemiologic based studies which uh, led the World Health Organization via the IARC to review the data to say that red meat was a uh, type 2 carcinogen processed meat was type 1. And so my assertion and most people that disagree would say that there are there are very significant confounders in epidemiology which would uh, point to perhaps there are other factors associated with meat eaters uh, that uh, that is probably based on, and I think that's a fair criticism, and I think it holds out when we look at those things. So one interesting subset of the population is if we look at the Asian cohort. Now, Asia is the largest continent in the world with regard to population. There's 1.3 billion people in China and about the same in India. So there's already 2.6 billion people in just those two countries alone, and you put the rest of Asia in there, and it's probably a little bit over 3 billion. So almost half of our world lives there. Uh, and when we look at almost all the studies concerning red meat and colorectal cancer on Asian cohorts, and I'll pull up a study here so you guys can review this, there is essentially no link whatsoever to red meat, whether it's red meat, whether it's processed meat, whether it's cooked, whether it's not cooked, doesn't matter the type of cooking technique, there is no association with all of those people in colorectal cancer. So the question becomes, may, well, maybe the meat is magically different in Asia somehow, or maybe they have special genetics. Well, the problem is when Asians move to the United States or other Western countries, their colorectal rates go up as well. Uh, is the meat different? Well, if you look at the exports from the United States, some of the number one countries that we export our meat to are Asian countries. And so they're eating the same beef that you and I are eating in the U.S. in many cases. The, the difference is they're not eating all the other garbage that goes with it. They have a much more traditionally healthy diet. They're not eating processed grains. They're not eating a bunch of sugar. They're not eating tremendous amounts of vegetable oil. Uh, and so these things are the difference between a population that eats red meat and gets cancer and a population that eats red meat and doesn't get cancer. There is a study that was done in uh, 2012 looking at something called the Healthy Eating Index, and it was done on Westerners. And so using the, the NHANES data, which is considered, you know, by a lot of people, the best food consumption data out there. So when they, when they evaluate people's diet for what they call a healthy eater index, and so when they say they remove all the processed garbage and sugary crap out of the diet and then compare meat eaters, the meat eaters, again, do not have any difference in mortality rates. So they don't die any more than anybody else as long as they're not eating a bunch of garbage. And so, again, this shows that the confounders are likely the cause of this. Uh, what happens to people that go on all-meat diets? We see this time and time and time again. Their health, by and large, generally tremendously improves. They get leaner. They lose extra body fat. Their blood pressure normalizes. Their inflammatory markers, both clinically clinically, and laboratory values go down. All of those things are associated with improved, not only health span, but lifespan. And so the problem is we've never been able to test pure meat eaters before. It's always been this confounded epidemiology, uh, you know, or, or rat studies where they feed the animals, you know, a crappy diet as a baseline and then they add meat to it. So again, this is something that uh, is very significant. And I think the carnivore population is teaching us that meat is not the bad guy. Meat is not the enemy. You can eat meat uh, as much as you want, and you're going to be fine. But you can't eat all the other garbage. And that is, that is the issue. Think about it. We've been eating meat for, as a, as a human species, 2.8 million years or so, ever since Homo habilis evolved, using tools, using tools to butcher things. We know that those tools go back that far and perhaps farther, perhaps 
uh, you know, we, you know, Homo habilis might have been the first creature to make tools, but beyond before that, things like Australopithecines util, utilize tools. Even chimpanzees use tools. They use rocks to break open things so they can get at termites and other things. So, you know, this is something we've been eating forever. What have we not been eating for forever? We've not been eating a lot of processed sugar for long, maybe a few hundred years, any significant quantity. Vegetable oils only entered the human diet roughly 100 years ago. Uh, high fructose corn syrup is less than 50 years old. Uh, highly refined processed grains, a few thousand years old. So these later things to the diet are almost certainly the things that probably contribute to disease. And it's not just only about calories because we can look at uh, tissue biopsies on, say, breast cancer patients, for, for example, women that have greater amounts of omega-6 fatty acids in their tissue have higher breast cancer rates. And where do those omega-6 fatty acids come from? They almost invariably come from processed seed oils. And so it's not just about calorie balance, it's about food quality, it's about appropriateness of the food we're eating for our species. Meat is the original human food. Uh, you know, granted we were eating fruits and twigs and berries uh, prior to becoming human a, a, as a primate, some sort of common ancestor primate seven, eight million years ago. But to become human, when we became human, meat became a significant part of our diet. So therefore meat is human food. Enjoy it, eat it, eat a lot of it. You'll feel a lot better. All right, so some interesting things coming up. World Carnivore Month coming up in January. Participate, spread the word. For you guys that do not wish to see this soy-based, processed food-based, vegan, plant-based future foisted upon you, if you're tired of the environmental propaganda that's being shoved down your throat, you need to share, you need to learn the counter arguments, spread them widely. The, the, the processed food companies have unlimited funds. They are on it 24 hours a day. They have good access to media. They, they advertise there. They have, you know, believe me, they have pretty good access to what goes out in the contents. The vegans are relentless. They believe they're fighting some cause for the animals that can't speak. Uh, you know, that's their ethical thing. But quite honestly, it's a garbage argument. It's a bunch of, be it's a bunch of bullshit. It's going to make people sick and weak. It's going to allow for in greater and greater amounts of processed food into the environment. We need meat on the menu. We need to keep it there. So you guys need to do whatever you can on social media. Tell your friends, spread the word, share the data. I put a lot of it out there. Follow me on Instagram, share my post. Follow me on Twitter, share my post. Uh, follow other people that know the environmental arts. Follow, follow Frank Mitlon or follow Sarah Place. Those guys can get you the data that you can use to uh, intelligently argue with the vegan zealots because those guys are going to quote studies that are based on poor information, outdated information, retracted studies, a study that takes, takes things out of context to suit their bent. They will twist and lie to get their agenda done. And that's just the way it is. And that's human nature. And so equally, people have to be just as aggressive, just as prolific, prolific uh, as at uh, countermanding this stuff. Otherwise, you and I are going to be eating a bunch of processed garbage more than we already are, and our health is only going to decline, and the health of our children is only going to decline. We do not need a processed food future. And the fact that vegans say they're only going to eat beans and lettuce is, is a bunch of bullshit, because what happens is, we can see what happens. It's already happened. As we've gotten more and more plant-based and, and, and farther away from animal foods, as we have, as we clearly have in the U.S. based on Every uh, metric out there as far as uh, food consumption, our, our consumption of carbohydrates has increased, has increased, our consumption of animal fats has gone down, our consumption of processed vegetable oil-based fats has gone up tremendously. Uh, all those things are just the patterns that happen. We already know it happens, and it'll continue to happen, and it's because it's very profitable. All right, check out MeatHeals.com. Submit your store to MeatHeals.com. Uh, my consultations for December are open. I've got some got some uh, time for that. I'll link that in. Uh, you know, Butcher Box is going to be uh, supporting World Carnivore Month in January. You know, support those guys. I'll put a link for those guys there. Um, what else? World Carnivore Tribe, twenty two thousand plus, soon to be the biggest group all around. I would say. Uh, lots of good information going out there. Uh, Restoration Health Vegan Recovery Group, well over a thousand people. 
uh, lots of neat people were gaining their health from veganism. If you're thinking about leaving veganism, if you're questioning uh, what it's doing for your health, if you're not getting the benefits you were promised, uh, if, if you know you just don't understand, go there. These people are people that were former vegans that have figured out how to um, you know, deal with that ethically. And it's a, it's a very supportive place. And I think it's a, it's, a, it's a, you know, if you want to be vegan, good for you. That's fine. Just don't shove it down everyone else's throat. Okay, guys, we'll talk to you later. Take care.